All right, we're back on Morning Line. Thanks for joining us. Our final segment this morning with Clint Kelly, malpractice attorney. The number's on the screen. We've got our final segment here. If you want to jump in, we're going to go next to Effie. Effie, good morning. Hi, Effie. Hello. Hello. <laughs> I just wanted to tell him, that's, I mean, um, Attorney Kelly, I go for a, a, a colonoscopy in two weeks, and I'm not even scared. <laughs> good for you. That's, that's all I wanted to say. Ah, okay. That's good. Well, God, I, I have some friends of mine um, who won't remain nameless who are afraid. They don't go. And I'm like, you've got to go. It's it's for your health. You the, the risk is minimal. And the value of what they discover, if they discover anything, is early detection and treatment. Absolutely. Man, good for you, Effie. Go and take And it's not just men, of course. It's women, too, that get colonoscopies. Yeah. Let's go next to uh, Tommy. Tommy, good morning. Hi, Tommy. Uh, good morning, Nick. How you doing? Good. What can we do for you? Oh, I got a few questions here. Uh, since you got the guy here on his malpractice. Sure. I've got an issue, uh, is, say, uh, your insurance. And uh, say, if you got Care and you got Medicare, and you got privatized insurance, and you go into the hospital to have surgery or something like that, uh, these doctors... Are they going to treat you different because of the difference in your insurance and the medical payments they get? Because I know one surgery, you can go to one hospital, it might be $150,000. You go to this next hospital just down the street there, and so I'll be $250,000 for the same surgery. Are you getting the same adequate huh. service for your insurance and uh, what you have to pay? Yeah. Uh, in, in general, Yes, in general. Now, the exception, Tommy, is there are some s situations where there are specialty hospitals set up for people who have really good insurance. And in those situations, uh, the care arguably is better mm -hmm. than uh, your general hospitals. I'll give yeah. you an example. There's a center for spinal surgery that's set up for people who have back surgery. And it's no coincidence that people that go to that place generally have good insurance, Blue Cross, Blue Shield, mm -hmm. you know, that type of thing. Whereas people who are Medicare patients will go to Baptist, or well, formerly you know, St. Thomas mm -hmm. Midtown. Um, and I do believe there's a difference in care provided at either one of those places. So there is an advantage in some cases to having private insurance. But I do believe, in general, you get the same care with both. And is that because your take is doctors have this Hippocratic Oath, and they're going to do the best they personally can? Is the different? And I would right. think doctors are the same then, wherever, in terms of Hippocratic Oath. Is it in resources that are at these facilities that because they take more, they have yeah. better resources in it, terms of equipment? Or? In the exception cases that I was talking about, yes, I believe that there are more resources. The attention to detail is greater. Because of that, um, the facilities are better, um, and therefore I think the care is, is higher. Uh, but in general, I think the care is the same because of the Hippocratic Oath. Doctors and nurses try to treat people the same. Uh, they want everybody to get better, and so it doesn't really matter who's paying them. Uh, it's it's generally you're going to get the same care. All right, let's go to Cheryl next. Good morning, Cheryl. How are you? Good morning, Nick. How are you? Doing good. I I I'm I I'm I'm excuse me. <laughs> um, yeah, I I'd like to uh, uh, say something about what uh, Tommy said. Yeah. Um, I have Medicaid and um, Pencare. Okay. And I get less quality care from the doctors than I would if I had Medicare or uh, a different type of insurance. How, now how do a you know? Of, a, you... a lot of doctors don't take what oh. I have. Oh, okay. And they don't, uh, I have noticed they don't treat me as well as they do with somebody with Medicare or somebody with privatized insurance. Yeah. Now, what, I mean, I know they don't get paid what they would normally bill a good insurance company. I know that uh, Medicaid, care only pays so much for certain things. Mm -hmm. And this really bothers me. 
Sure. And why is this? Okay, I can answer that question. Uh, there are doctors who will not take uh, Medicare mm -hmm. or TenCare. Uh, a lot of psychi psychiatrists won't do that. Mm -hmm. They charge on a cash basis. There are other situations where some doctors, they don't want to mess with it. Um, they have established themselves, they have a certain type of practice, they have, uh, let's just say they have separated themselves from the pack, mm -hmm. uh, and they can afford to decide to take a certain type of insurance or cash. Um, and like everything in America, you know, there mm -hmm. is, uh, you can pay for better. Uh, in limited situations, I think her situation is the exception, not the rule. But that's why, Cheryl, is because there are some doctors who can't afford to not have to take Medicare or TenCare because they are skilled enough and successful enough that they can charge cash or they can only take private insurance and still make a good living. Yeah, now my beef would not be with them. As you say, this is America and that's where it goes. My beef would more be if she was referring to the doctors she does go to who choose to accept that, but for some reason maybe they take both types of patients. And when she comes through the door, because maybe she's got these benefit plans that don't pay as well, maybe she, her perception is they don't treat her the same. Look, and that I'm not sure about. I, I, don't, I can't yeah. answer for that, Cheryl. Right. It's just been my experience, I, my, what I've seen myself, doctors generally tend to treat patients the same regardless of the insurance that they have right. generally right not always but okay. generally um, one of our callers I guess the one before her did talk about just back injuries or things like this is it, what part of the body <laughs> produces the most malpractice suits in your opinion is it back surgeries I, I don't know if I've ever asked you that maybe that's a hard one to answer but I'm just thinking where the most common surgeries are where there might be something that goes wrong Back surgeries would be the surgery where things go wrong the most. Okay. I, I would agree with that. But I will tell you that these days, I don't think that's the surgery that generates the most lawsuits. I think these days, the surgery that generates the most lawsuits are gallbladder. Okay. What they call laparoscopic mm -hmm. ah. uh, procedures Weight done loss in the, stuff. Correct. In the abdomen, anything in the abdomen or around the gallbladder. Uh, surgical misadventures that we were talking yep. about, those I think now are generating the most lawsuits, even though you have, I think, the most complications and, and, and to some extent, uh, bad outcomes yeah. with the back. The other question before we wrap things up, we've talked about infection in the hospitals. Mm -hmm. Have you seen recently, um, all the national news have been doing some stories on this new super bug that they're worried, I forget the name of it, I may have it in here, but it's the latest one that it's not a bug, it's a fungus now. And it's on the par with some of these, you know, like MRSA is what mm -hmm. you've said. You're talking about how you go into hospitals now and, you know, yeah, you have to be treated, but you're being exposed to a bunch of crap anyway, correct? They're dirty. They're dirty. And now there's a new one that is a fungus that's showing up in hospitals. I forget, how it's, it's come from overseas and now it's making itself known here. Does that surprise you at all that there's gonna be new ones? No, I mean, Nick, that's the great fear that we have is that there's, you know, you read these end of the world books. Yep. One of, on the list of eight or nine, is a superbug that cannot be treated. Kind of like what it was in the medieval times when you had the Black Plague there's no treatment for it and it knocks out you oh, know I totally believe that I, I'm not worried about weapons of mass destruction I'm, I'm worried about germs of mass destruction it's a superbug fungus now emerging in US hospitals first identified in Japan spread to more than a dozen countries around the globe now including the United States it's called candida aureus or something like that a multi-drug resistant yeast that can cause invasive infection and death and that is the latest one, and it's been in some of the newscasts lately as being this new one that they can't feed how to treat it. Well, Nick, you know, that's scary. Hospitals man. better clean up, man. That's all I know to tell you. They better really clean up and they better dig down hard on their antiseptic policies because this is the type of thing it could get out of control and it usually starts with a hospital. Yeah. Uh, a, a singular place where something like this spreads. Uh, they, they better clean up. Yeah, I know for a fact that you have told me that um, there are some hospitals cleaner than others. Oh, yeah, for sure. <laughs> For sure, no, it's no joke. And I'm not talking about just in Nashville, there are other cities where there are some that are dirtier than others. And those of us who do malpractice work, we know where they are. 
it's just a fact of life. How can the general public know? That's another question as we talked about. How do you know if you're getting a good doctor? We gave them some good tips on that. How can you get a sense? There's no data on that. There's nothing that people can read And you can can't walk on. in there and look around I because just, if it's a microscopic germ. I know it because I'm in this fraternity sure. of lawyers that we know. We just know from experience. But the general public, no, they don't have access to that kind of data. They can't. So mm -hmm. you're still then putting yourself at the mercy of wherever you end up going. I mean, you can call me and I can tell you. Sure. But I don't say this publicly because, first of all, I, I could get sued for sure. it. And secondly, I don't think it's my role to be scaring people into not going to hospitals. I, I, people need to go when they need to go. But yeah, there are definitely some hospitals in Nashville that are dirtier than others. Yeah. Any class action cases going on right now not that you're right involved now. with? None. They've all they're, resolved. They're, have they really? Yeah. And who gets paid mostly when they resolve? Those are the lawyers, right? Well, yeah, I mean, they have to. Otherwise, you don't have those cases. I know. That's the thing. Everyone talks about that. They don't have the cases. But I see ads on TV still. Were you victim of this? Or oh, yeah. did you have that? Or some kind of mesh case. Right. Some of those cases are good. Some of those cases are, are, are not good. Yeah. Uh, and if you look, people, when you see those ads, look <laughs> and see where those lawyers are located. Most of the time, they're not in Tennessee. They're out-of-state lawyers. So what does that mean? Just I How mean, do we know whether they're good? I mean, they're, they're, they're just advertisers. They come in, they advertise here, they just kind of just, you know, like carpet bomb here, and people look on there and they think, oh, and then they don't read the fine print at the bottom of the ad, which tells you these lawyers from out of state, some of them can be flat out incompetent, have oh. no idea what they're doing. Yeah, okay, but if you want to be part they'll of They'll take your case and they'll yeah. go farm it out to somebody else in another state, and then another state. And so you don't know who your lawyer is until you get really deep into the case. I think it's a horrible way to practice. So a best rule of thumb, if you can, of course, call your is lawyer, hire, your local lawyer. Right. Yeah. You do most of your work um, in Tennessee, Tennessee right? Yeah. But you have colleagues if you need to go across state lines. Correct. Now I, I can do things in, in Kentucky, particularly in Southern Kentucky, but if it's something be beyond Tennessee or outside of Kentucky or different, I've got colleagues. Yeah. I know exactly who to refer to. people to. You do ever in federal court? Oh yeah. Yeah, so Many. I've got one pending right now in federal court. That's what I figured. Federal yeah. or I like federal state. court actually. There's a lot of procedural advantages to being there. Is that right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, for a plan. Remind folks where you are at and how it works if they call in. My office is located in Hendersonville. It's six one five eight million. That's eight zero 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 zero. It's not hard to. Uh, it is hard to forget. You should be able to remember that. Sure. You call and ask to speak to Michelle. You give Michelle the background information on your case. As much information as you can provide will help me. She'll give me that information. I will then make a flash decision whether to investigate it further or whether or not I have to say, look, I'm sorry, I can't take it. But I'll promise you I'll send you a letter in writing telling you why I can't take your case if I don't. If I do, I'll set up an appointment for you to come in and see me or I'll go where you are. Yeah. Your class act for getting back to people when you can't take their case. That's just you're a good guy. It's part of a job That's being a lawyer. Clint, thank you. Thank you. It's a pleasure Appreciate seeing you. We'll yeah. see you again in a month, all yes, right? Yes, sir. Thank we'll you. take a break, be back with a programming note about tomorrow, and I'll put up his phone number one more time right after this.